We're going to talk about our key screen game today with a little focus on the quarterback play and the wide receiver play. Um, here's where we start. We start with key one out of the dual formation. So that's, that's the first play that we're going to put in as far as our quarterback reads and, and getting him to understand uh, how to throw and, uh, and how to read the key screen situation. Um, so here you've got dual right, Zorolad, key one, versus your basic cover three defense. For us, the key is the first thing he is going to look at all right, before the ball is snapped. And uh, Patrick did a great job of, of explaining this on the forum. It's basically a counting game from the outside in. Uh, what we are not going to do is count any of the deep defenders on the field. Uh, when we throw a key screen, we're expecting to pick up four yards. If we get more than that, great, but it's a minimum four-yard play for us. And that's what we're doing. I think you have to coach your receivers. You know, those guys are always looking, you know, for touchdowns. I want them to catch the ball, get north and south, get four or five. If, if we can break it, great, but I don't want them dancing and getting one or two. Uh, might as well hand it off if we're going to get one or two yards. All right, so on key one, our outside receiver runs the key screen. All right, he's two steps up the field, two steps back looking for the football. Uh, our Y receiver, all right. He's got nobody on top of him, so he's going to use what we call a push kick. He's going to get vertical for as much as he can, all right, three to five steps, and he's going to break out and kick out the corner, all right. And when you practice this, you've got to make sure that those Ys are getting flat when they go to kick out the corner. They can't aim for where the corner is. The corner's going to be reacting up on the Z, so he's got to be flat on that. I probably drew too much of an angle on that line. Again, he might get three steps, might get five steps up the field, then he's going to go kick out the corner. All right, that's our key screen blocking uh, out of duel right there. Quarterback's going to look at it, and he's going to evaluate it. He's not going to count that cornerback. He's only going to count this outside linebacker. And if they're playing cover three with an apex defender halfway between the Y and the tackle, we count him as half a man. We've got two. They've got half a man. We're going to throw that key screen every time. All right, we're going to try not to let them play this defense um, if we can help. All right, next look we get to is cover one. So now they've widened that outside linebacker out there playing a man-to-man -man type look here. Honest, all right. Um, we call this two versus one. Now we tell the Y, if that outside linebacker is looking at you, we are not going to push kick the corner because now we're just bringing him to the play. We're going to block him and let our, our Z go one-on-one -on -one with the corner. All right, your quarterback, he's counting. He sees one guy against R2. He knows he's going to throw the ball. For the quarterback, it's catch, turn, and throw. We talk, tell him to throw it for the upfield ear of the receiver. All right, we want to throw it in that face area, but slightly upfield to the upfield ear. And again, for him, it's just a simple counting procedure. From there, we move on to cover two, two deep look. Now we've, uh, in fact, talking to Patrick a little bit, we've, we're we going to try to change our approach here. Generally, last season, we told our quarterback if they were in press coverage, we were not going to throw that key. We were going to come inside. And what we found was, you know, teams that played too high and pressed us outside, that Will linebacker right here, he was going to be a split-the-difference type of guy, and we were able to get the ball handed off. So. Last season, we told our quarterback, well, if you have a press corner and you don't feel good about it, all right, go ahead and hand it off. Now, if we use the count, the corner's one, Will's a half a man, depending on how he's playing, so that's going to be a game plan situation for us going into this year. Now, how are we going to get the key thrown into the corner, the press corner? We're going to tell the Y to go flat right off the snap of the football. Flat to the corner, look to kick him out. Z, instead of getting up the field, you're going to bring it back to the quarterback about three steps, and then we'd look at the hit it right in that seam right there. Why would we throw it? If that will is becoming a guy in the box, we're going to tell the quarterback, go ahead and throw that key one. If that will is really not giving us any issues in the box, then we're going to tell him, hey, go ahead and hand that off. So um, that's a little bit of an adjustment for us going forward uh, for next year. That's how we're going to look at it in the spring. Next situation, cover two man. So now they've got one two against R two. 
If it's two versus two, we're going to run the football. Quarterback gets off of that decision right there. He knows he's not even going to look at the key. All right, once the ball is snapped, he is now going to turn his shoulders. All right, he's going to put the ball in the tailback's belly, and he's reading that defensive end. We have an open B gap here. So he knows pre-snap, he's taking a look there, that he's going to hand the ball off about 99% of the time than when there is an open B gap. And, and we talked about the offensive line play here a couple times uh, during the last few webinars. This tackle using his through blocker sift holds the end off. We've got a nice three-foot split there, and we, we think that's a, a great running play for our football team. Um, coaching points for the tailback here. We've always talked about attacking the play side of the man closest to the center. So in this case, the weak side nose is the man closest to the center. We're going to attack his play side number, try to get that mic coming downhill, try to get him moving a little bit, and then we're going to look to wind that thing back. Uh, and that's, that's what we want to do with that tailback. If the one and the three were switched, all right, and I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't draw that up, but if we were to switch the one and the three, I can adjust it real quick for you when we talk about the tailback. So now the one and the three are switched. All right, we're going to get an under block on the nose here. We're going to double him. And they'll work off to that Mike linebacker. Now the B gap is canceled. So now the quarterback makes it a true zone read on the end. If the end squeezes hard, all right, the quarterback's going to pull the ball. If the end plays up the field at all, we're going to hand the football off. And um, that's been very effective for us as well. But I think one thing that's important is the tailback's aiming point now has to change. All right, when we are running the Zorro at the one technique, the tailback has to aim for the play side number of the one. So he's going to come across the ball a lot further. What that's going to get us is that should get us Mike moving laterally and not getting downhill. It should allow the center to expand this gap, and now we should be able to take the ball right up in here or possibly bend it back behind the nose. But uh, for us, I think the coaching point of the tailback attacking the defender, play side, who is closest to the center, uh, really helped us in the run game. Again, anytime it's two versus two, we're going to run Versus cover four, the teams that we see play these guys eight yards off. All right, we're going to go ahead and not count those. We're going to say they are above the hard deck, deeper than seven yards. We're not going to make them in our count. So really against cover four, we've got half a man, all right, against two. So catch the ball, throw the key screen. Okay, now we're looking at Zoroad key two. All right, we're just... Flip the formation. Now we are running key two. We still have a two receiver flank, so the rules all stay the same. Now the X receiver is the blocking receiver on key two. Okay, he's got most dangerous man. When our opponent's playing cover three with an apexed outside linebacker, we're going to say that the corner is the most dangerous man. We're going to be able to get away from this outside linebacker. All right, our F is going to take one step up the field. And I think this is critical. He is going to backpedal to the sideline. Um, this helped our, uh, our completion percentage a lot in the key game um, and, and really allowed him to catch the ball and make it an easy throw back. So basically he gets to the same spot as your X would on key one. It's almost the exact same throw for the quarterback. And again, the quarterback's aiming point is that upfield ear hole of the receiver. Two receivers versus half a defender, throw the key screen. They go to cover one, so now they're going to man us up out here. Okay, X has most dangerous man. So he's going to look at this, and we're going to determine now that this outside linebacker is the most dangerous. So he's going to push and crack on this. Okay, he may push for one. He may push for three steps. We, we usually don't get a five-step push against man coverage but he'll get a three-step push, then he'll come inside and he'll crack that. 
we're hoping that that three-step push gets the corner to backpedal a little bit so that we can go ahead and throw our key. Again, from a quarterback decision standpoint, we don't count a deep defender. It's two of our guys against one of their guys. Throw the football. Against your too high look, quarterback's going to look out here and count. The corner's number one. We don't count the deep safety. The will's the half a man. So now we have to make a decision. All right, we've got two of our guys against one and a half of theirs. If this will is a big guy hurting us in the box, we'll come out here and throw key two. All right, we'll take this guy and just run him to the sideline, create a nice running lane for our F, and get right up the field. If that will is wide out on us, okay, we may count that as two on two, and we'll get get the ball handed off in there. We have five blockers. They have five guys in the box. We'll be fine there. This would be a nice situation. Uh, Nate, you mentioned Colt earlier as we were talking before the, the webinar. Um, you could go the Colt scheme. If you knew you were going to get a four down playing a lot of cover two, you could go ahead and block this backside tackle on by calling Colt, and now you're reading that Will. All right, you've got five to block their five. If Will goes and covers the key, hand it off. If Will's sniffing around in the box, throw the key. That's that's a nice uh, situation to run the Colt play. Cover two man, two of our guys versus two of their guys. Okay, run the football. Two versus two, run it. Cover four, same situation. Two deep defenders. We only have half a man here. All right, that apex will linebacker. We're going to throw the key. Again, push crack by the X when the corner's playing off, and, and now you've got the ball in, in one of your best players' hands with a chance to run one-on-one -on -one against the corner. Uh, you know, listening to a few clinics uh, this offseason, you know, I hear guys talk about their corners as cover guys instead of tacklers. Well, we want to force that corner. Uh, he might be a soft kid to be a tackler. The next thing we go to now for us is trio, right, Zoroad, key two. So now we start to incorporate the, the key game out of a three receiver set. Okay, Same numbers and same counting situation applies. We have three guys out here. How many does the, does the defense have? We never count that deep corner. We've got one, two or one and a half, we are going to throw the key. Now, we let the Y make the call out here. If the Y has a defender outside of him, strong safety, he's going to make a cab call. The Z is going to crack down on cab, and the Y is going to come flat behind the Z. Our F, his key two technique doesn't change at all. All right, so now we've got the uh, strong safety block, the Y kicks the corner, and we've got a nice running lane right between that cab block. We're going to run away from this Sam, who's probably apex in cover three. All right, three versus one and a half, throw the football. Now they play cover one, they're manning us up, okay? Our rule for the Y is if you have a guy looking at you playing you man coverage, you need to make an on call now. So we know the Y is blocking on, all right? The outside receiver, on key two is blocking most dangerous, so he's going to see a deep corner, all right, and a man coverage safety. He's going to use his push crack technique, all right, to block that safety, and we're going to go one on one with the pencil neck corner here. Throw the ball three versus two. They go to cover two on us now. Now we get into a game playing situation based on how they're playing their cover two. All right, if Mike is an apex guy sniffing around in the box, we can come out here and throw the ball. Z blocks the corner out. Y is going to kick that Sam. And again, where's that Sam playing? We can catch it and bring it back in here, find open space, make some hay on this play. Okay, we've got three of our guys against two and a half of theirs. If they go to the two-man look, Okay, now the Y has to make his on call. Quarterback counts one, two, three against one, two, three. Run the football. One, two, three, four, five against five. You know, a lot of guys talk about counting the box for the, the zone read game. We
we don't count the box, we count the key screen guys. Mm, yeah, right? really good. The key screen guys will let us know what we have in the box. Wow. Wow. Okay. If we get cover four when we're running trio key two, now really we have three versus one. That's how our count goes. The corner and the safety are deep defenders. Okay. That's really the only guy we've got to worry about. The Y has nobody on him, a man outside, so he's going to make a cab call. That Z, that's probably a bad drawing. He'd probably come in on a cab and crack that right away, and the Y would work off his tail. We really like this cab combination. Get a crack, get a kick, and run the ball vertically up through that seam. That's been very good for us. Okay? The third situation you have in your offense, all right, is your comet game. Now you are motioning to a three and one, basically. And we run green, fast, Zorro, Odd, Comet. We do things a little differently than Noel and then our green. The T is always to the two receiver side because this is our F. We're not taking him off the field and putting another green back on. Our guy is really a, a receiver. So um, we run green, fast, Zorro, Odd, Comet. You can put him out here and you can run dual F ghost. Zoro Odd Comet, Dual F Quick, Zoro Odd Comet, you have a lot of variations there, but basically we have a rule of Comet, okay? Now, we anticipate that the defense is always going to be two for two out here, okay? We are now, when it's Comet, we are looking for some type of linebacker or safety rotation, okay? So in this case, they're in a 4-3 defense, playing cover one high or cover three, all right, when we put our man in comet motion, we are going to look to see if the linebacker or the safeties roll hard. If there's no movement from the inside, we are going to throw the ball. If the linebacker widens or the safeties roll hard, we are going to run the football. Uh, Bobby Acosta, when he was with DCNJ, uh, beat Montclair State with this play. Montclair said we are going to keep seven in the box the entire football game. Okay, never walk this guy on the motion. They must have thrown this key screen eight or ten times during the ball game. Block him, block him. You've got a great athlete with the ball in space and, and a whole lot of guys chasing him. So the comment read has been a real good one for us. Now, one adjustment. If we go dual F quick, what we found was the quarterback was going to look at the linebacker while reading the tailback because sometimes it happens a little bit later. So when we were in our F quick motion, we actually got the tailback ride as we were looking at that linebacker. Okay? From our uh, fast motion, we got a little bit further out here. We could see it pre-snap, so he could make a pre-snap decision whether to throw the comet or not. If we get a too deep look, again, we have two for two out here. What are we looking at? We're looking at this Mike linebacker to see if he runs, or we're looking at this safety to see if he rolls down and the free rolls to the middle. So our quarterback's eyes are down the middle, and he's looking for movement. No movement, throw the comet. If we get movement, we're on the football. Okay. Uh, Doug, do we have any questions on, on the techniques on the key game or the comet game? Coach, we got a ton of questions right now, um, so let me let me let me scroll through real quick and, and let's. I let, go ahead. No, well, I I figured because that was a great rundown, Coach. I was just wondering back on back on that cover two look against cover two man against the duel. I was going to ask if like Patrick, if uh, if you would like tell your uh, tell your guys to um to go to automatic fades instead of handing it off. Yeah, I mean that's that's definitely a way to do it. Um, you know, there's there's a few different things I would go to if we were seeing any kind of cover two man, um, especially empty. I mean, if you have a running type quarterback, uh, it get it gets defenses out of that defense really quick because I know a lot of the Clark teams uh, run a ton of cover two man. Right. But yeah, de definitely. I mean, any kind of slant or fade that you can get. You know, called in that situation is always good. Okay, because I I don't know I know so, a lot of teams that will if they got a good X coach or a good Z 
they're going to fade that guy on a, on a, on a cover two man press and try and throw a two ball right in the grass area and hit him as soon as he clears the corner. Absolutely. That's, and that's a great play. Um, what we would call that, you know, we would check quick game, you could call your Daytonas, those types of things. Because my offensive line coach would be having a fit if we got a five man box and, and we got five guys to block it uh, and we don't run the football in there against that cover two man a little bit. Um, you know, the old line coach is going to go crazy because that's, yep. that's a great option for you, too. Yep. Yep. Good. Hey, why don't we take just a couple questions, and then I want, I want Patrick to be able to, to go through his first, his first presentation tonight, too, because I think it looks pretty helpful. Okay. Then, yeah, let's try to, let's try to be, be as concise on these guys. So the first one is uh, Mark Johnson for you, Coach. He says, will Zorro Odd ever go in that front side V gap if we are running it to a one technique? Yes, it will. Absolutely. Um, our guys press it in there. Now, the defense usually usually takes that away from us, um, but we, we've hit it up in there a bunch of times. Um, let's see if I can go to the blanks here, if I get a better look here. So, Mark's talking about the one technique being here, the end being here, some type of backer here. What we find is the center is going to really kick that over here, and by having the tailback press that B, that just opens up a really big lane backside. I mean, it has ended up in there. We've hit a couple big runs, but boy, this linebacker plays downhill now, and and we get some stretch out of that nose, and it really we've had a lot more big plays come back through here, um, but we think it's really important that he presses the B gap to start. Okay. That handles that question. Yeah, sorry about yes. that. So, um, do you ever tag key screen to front side as well as read that pre-snap? Yes, there's one great situation to tag key screen on the front side. So we're running Zorro odd, and it's that one technique that Mark was just talking about. You know, teams want to play the three back here. What they start doing is they get him up the field to, to stop the offense right there, and they fold him into this B gap, and he's real tough for that guy to get to. So you're running your Zorro lot in there, and they tell that Mike linebacker, all right, whenever we get that split look, you're going to play down in that gap, and all of a sudden they've got all the gaps filled because they're cheating by taking a, you know, playing a cover two look, but that will is really not respecting your, your front side key. They figured out, they say, okay, they only run key to the tailback side, so we're going to cheat in there. So this is a great time to run key two to the front side. So as soon as this Will, who's cross keying, sees that tailback heading in, he's going to come down in that B gap hard, and you just you, you just throw it out here, and you've got basically you know, two on one, throw the key out to the front side. So by game plan, we will key to the front side but it's, it's only in specific situations. Got it. Good. So when counting the, cre the key screen, how deep are you considering deep enough not to count? Seven to eight yards, but it depends on who we're playing. If they've got a, you know, an All-American corner who runs four or five, well, it might have to be eight yards, nine yards, ten yards. You know, um, if that kid is not very quick and he's bailing, you know, He's, he's bailing, we can we can make it shorter than that. So somewhat personnel, the general rule is seven yards. But the personnel can change. Okay, you guys have to help me out here. Sorry, I got an abbreviation of MDM. So for the for the X, is the MDM considered to be the closest defender to the line of scrimmage? The MDM is the most dangerous guy that he thinks is going to make a play. So if he's got a corner here. And we're running key two out to this side. We got an outside linebacker here. Um, you know, I, I've never coached that. I, I coach it as who's going to make the play is, who, is is how we coach it. So right now he's got to figure out which of these two guys he thinks is going to make the play. If, if this guy were head up on on that guy playing man coverage, well, then I certainly think he's the most dangerous guy. Um, but if he's apex, he's the closest guy to the line of scrimmage in this position, but we no longer think he's the most dangerous guy. He's splitting the difference 
we think we can run away from him, so we may go ahead and block the corner on that. So we coach him uh, basically just that is, hey, if the guy's head up playing man on, on the number two, he's the most dangerous. If he splits the difference and his eyes are inside, well, we think we're going to be able to get that thrown, go ahead and block the corner. So that's how he figures out who most dangerous is. It's not necessarily the closest guy to the line of scrimmage. Mm -hmm. Good. What width for the outside linebacker changes him from a half man to a full man? Um, if, he's, if he's within the framework of the F or within two yards of the F, he becomes a full man. I, I think two yards is about what we told the guys. Okay. And I've got I've got some questions on on Colt as well. Do you want to tackle that now, or do you want to go through some of the other stuff that's specific? No, let's here? no, let's 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 bang Colt because I think that's that's I don't think it's that difficult. So let's I'm pretty sure Drew can probably cover it pretty quickly. Okay. I will cover it in a second, Nate. I want to go one one thing we think is real important because I think this will help all the guys a lot. And this yeah. is how we coach this stuff. Oh um, yeah, this is great. Wow. We run this key drill for ten minutes on every. Tuesday, um, and again, we only have 55 minutes a day to practice offense. Uh, you know, we're, we're not, you know, a, a college program where they're, you know, the whole practice is run the offense. Our kids have to practice half offense, half defense. So on a Tuesday, the minute we start offense, right, the first thing we go to is a key drill. And I'm fortunate. I actually, usually we have four quarterbacks. This year we only had three. So we have two quarterbacks playing center quarterback and a coach playing center for our shotgun snaps. Sometimes that's our place kicker. In fact, this year that's where, where he spent his time on the key drill. But we had three quarterbacks, so the kicker stays here. One quarterback is here snapping. Two quarterbacks are here. So the three quarterbacks rotate in a circle every rep. We set up dual right. You know, I'm, I'm running to the middle of the field yelling dual right. So the Ys are all lined up here. Our right side receivers are all lined up here. The L's are lined up here. The F's are lined up here. All right, the first group goes up on the ball. All right, the last group goes up and plays defense. So I got an, an R playing corner, a Y playing outside linebacker, an F playing outside linebacker, and an L playing corner. So over here on the right, we're running key one. And now he's applying his most dangerous man rule. You know, whatever we're seeing for the week, if I'm going to see a lot of cover two for the week, you know, this guy's up in cover two. We're going to see a post safety team. He's off, and now he's you know he's blocking he's blocking the man on. If, if it's man coverage, if we think it's a lot of cover three, he's going to use his push kick technique, and and we're going to get out there. We call. We're going to throw key on this side over here. All right, same cadence. We're throwing the key two over here. Um, Yell's got to make his read now. If F is head up playing man, we push crack him. We throw to the F. Okay. If F is inside playing zone. All right, then we stalk on here. So the blocking is live. The kids are catching the keys, getting upfield, and we're getting a ton of reps. You go from offense to defense to the end defense to the end of the line, and and it really moves. in In three minutes, you know, I can get four or five, six reps easily. Uh, well, even more than that, I get a ton of reps you know, for, for each kid in key one and key two. And then all we do after three minutes, we tell the Y's come over here. The F's go over there, and then we switch it. So now the L side is running key one, and the R side is running key two. Uh, and in, in about six minutes, we get our key drilled very well. And then we move on, and we go to our three and one key drill. We move the ball to the hash. Uh, one thing I don't know, I feel like it's different in the end zone offense, and we did a study of our, our five most competitive games this year. And we found that 81% of the snaps were on the hash this season, you know, running end zone offense. I, I can't tell you where what that stat was in our previous offense, but this year 81% of the snaps were on the hash. So we, wow. we spent a lot of time in trio. So now we have the same drill happening, but now I have Y and F on the same side working their combinations, okay? And now we have L on the back side with the quarterback working a quick game route, whether it be a slant, a hitch, or a fade, but he's getting a quick game. And we use this setup. You know, we may be drilling our trio keys. We may um, drill the Comet keys out, out of this as well, the Comet screens as well. Uh, our front side works their cab blocks, their double blocks, they're on, whatever it might be for the week. So 
Um, in 15 minutes, um, we get the key game drilled very, very well. Um, probably this year what we're going to do is we're going to do our three-in-one key drill on Mondays, which is just with our varsity players, and do our two-and-two two key drill on Tuesdays so that we, we can get it done a little bit quicker. But um, for us, this has been a, a big part of how we get our kids ready for game week, and I think it's been excellent for us. Um, the other drill that I would share with you that's been a great summer drill for us uh, is our quarterbacks and, and tailbacks working together for 10 minutes a day on our swing drill. Um, you know, you're, you're an end zone team, you're a big Chevron and Exxon team. This has been a, a great drill for us. Now, we have a lot of guys that play tailback. We only have, you know, a couple good ones, but we got a lot of guys there now because uh, we have no fullback in our offense. And, uh, you know, so a lot of bodies end up there. But for us, we, we continue with our four quarterback rotation. We put the ball right here on the hash. We've got a line of four tailbacks on each side. We've got one tailback as our hot swing uh, read. So to the field side, we're running Chevron, our five-step swing. Quarterback takes a three-step drop. He knows it's Chevron, so he's, he's looking snag, corner, and then to swing. So it's a three-step drop, all right? Hitch up after he looks at the snag as if he was throwing the corner. Hitch up and throw the tailback on the swing route. If this tailback were to blitz, this tailback would yell hot, 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 and now the quarterback would immediately stop his drop and throw the hot swing. To the boundary, we're running Exxon. So now it's our three-step swing by the tailback. He's got a hot read as well. Quarterback's taking the three-step drop. We're reading it swing to snag. Okay, one, two, three, throw the swing. If he were to get the hot call, he's going to stop his drop as quickly as he can, get the ball off a little bit faster. So... This was a big drill for us in the summer. Once we got into game week, we couldn't do it a lot. But uh, if you're going to be a, a Chevron Exxon team, I think this is one of the most important drills that you can do. Um, and it was great. We, we worked this the first 10 minutes of practice in the summer. While our receivers were going on stance and starts and those things. Our quarterbacks and, and uh, tailbacks would get some swing drill work. So um, if you're going to run this stuff, I, I think those are two great drills. That, that you certainly want to try to incorporate in the program. Coach, whatever they're paying you at Ramapo, it's not enough. It's not um, enough. Absolutely right. Hey, Coach, I can, can tell I, you that for sure. If I can I'm ask you, go, uh, real first, quick, I want to throw in, hey, Coach, can I ask you a favor? During okay. spring ball, can you do some video of that for us? Um, yeah, we don't start till June, yeah. unfortunately. Till June, but I, okay. I would be happy to do that. I would love it. Coach, on, that, on those wide receiver drills, the key one, the key two, and out of the trio, do you, do you ever have your wide receiver coach back behind the receivers telling the defenders what to do, or do you just tell them, hey, this is the look we're practicing today? Um, he's given them – we basically show this is the look he's practicing. That's where he does coach it from. Uh, okay. You know, one of the things we got to do is we got to get on those guys to play hard on defense. We want that to be a very physical drill for our wide receivers. We want them, you know, really going hard there because um, we think that's that's an important blocking session for us as well. And we yeah. want our kids running the ball hard. So for us, it, you know, we don't do a lot of live stuff during the week, but, but that's a very live drill for us. Okay, and then the, and then once the receiver catches it, what, like a 10-yard burst, 10-yard yeah, finish? He has, he has to get 10. He has to get 10. Okay. I'm drawing this, coach. You said you wanted to talk Colt a little bit. Yeah, just took. Yeah, just cover Colt with them because I think it's a good concept and why you would run Colt. It it wasn't a big scheme for us, but if you are running your Zorro here, I'm running Zorro odd. Okay. Basically, what Colt allows us to do, we're going to block one, two, three, four, and now Colt tells us our defensive end. Or, excuse me. Our backside offensive tackle, he no longer has a through block. He is now going to stay on the defensive end, okay? Um, and now you're going to have five for five, and this now becomes your read. Your key screen guy basically becomes your read. You're going to block these five guys. You're going to run your key out here. So if he's out on the key, you know you're going to be able to hand the ball off. Okay, um, so that's the basic concept in Colt is that you no longer 
through block that. Now you can you can package Colt a number of different ways because in all honesty, if our, if our guys came up on the ball, right, our tackle would know that uh, if we're running Zorro, our through block is to this outside Sam. Right, if we've done a good job teaching recognition during the week, right, he would know that his through block is to Sam because either using Jack's count system or our communication system, um, basically these four guys are going to block those four guys, all right, and you're running regular Zorro, the backside tackle should know, well, that's my through block. Is there any reason for me to get off? No. So in this particular situation, he should stay on there anyway. But if I wanted to remind him of that, make it easier, I would call Colt, and now I get that, you know, he wouldn't even be thinking through block. He'd know he's on, and it allows us to get five on to five in the box. Yeah. I mean, are you, are guys running, I mean, are you thinking Colt when that hey, end? Hey, I want, hey who's, who, who's that talking? I love the way that guy talks. I know, man. Is he good or what? How's it uh, going, though? What, is that there true? There we go. That's me. What's that? I can hear, hey, you're supposed, you're, you're supposed to say some more, hey, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> or, hey, some more, get out of here. Are you freaking kidding me? Huh? Hey, I just got off. I just got out of meetings. Just was listening, so I'll be here if you need me, Nate. Uh, we do need you, Coach. When do you like to? When do you like to use Colt? When do you like to base the backside on Zorro? If they're going, if they're playing option switch on the Zorro, just exactly, exactly what Drew said. If they're trying to, if they're trying to close the end, try close the end hard and wrap the wheel backer for the quarterback. Okay. Now, you go, now go Colt base the five, and now just. There's no read. Just key the wheel for your key throws. Okay, Drew's Drew's drawing it up right now. Good. Three down, no, or or four down more. Four down. Four down. Now, don't our regular Zorro rules take care of that? Even that read exchange, because that's what I've been telling my guys is. If we're running Zorro correctly, we, we've still got that read exchange handle. Yeah, but it's not so much not so much as when the, it's when the wheel packers, it's the shade and the five, and the wheel packers playing the B gap. All right? And so I'll just go ahead and so not have to worry about it. I'll just call Colt. And, and, because I have Colt in anyway because I run Colt out of 20, all right, which is Zorro for everybody. But now I just lead the backside back through through to the wheel backer. So now, so now instead of having that tackle have any indecision, I'll swing the back that way and run Zorro or tear motion, run Zorro, and not just base it, just give the quarterback. And I'll be honest with you, Drew, I probably called Colt two out of 20 times. It's mostly Zorro. Okay, good. And that's what I'd say. We've, we've become a real big, you know, we're a real big Zorro team, and because we're sift blocking here, all right, or through blocking, if they want to do this stuff, hey, that tackle's never going to come off that end, and, and that B-gap's going to be wide open for our running back because you know, we could try to teach this kid, you're not going to come off until that will shows in the B. So, um, you know, we have some film where this will is, is out here, and we're running the ball up in there, and our guys just, we don't come off because there's no reason to. Nobody threatens the B. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Love it. Man, that is really good stuff. End zone, zone read takes care of that read exchange for the most part because of the tackles, you know, through block situation. Right, right, right. Hey, Doug, any more yeah. any more questions for Drew? Like twenty. <laughs> we got All right, we'll let's take a couple more because we are going to have. I mean, we are going to have Patrick get on and do his first presentation because he's got some interesting things he's doing that could help some guys. Yeah. Um, All right. We'll, we'll roll through quick. So do you run yeah. key one out of trio? Yes. It's not a big play for us. We'll, we run it into the boundary more. When we go trio into the boundary. We like key one. Um, and it's, it was a good play for us there. Um, we don't run it very often to the field. All right. We're the key. We can't do it. It's just something we haven't done a lot. We, we really like key two to the trio to the field. That was very good for us this year. What's the key coaching points on teaching the stock? Your guys have to, and, and I've heard Bobby, I think Bobby used the word ooze block, okay? 
Your guys have to sit their ass down when the defensive back stops his feet. You know, we, we call it a foot fire. When that defensive end, you know, t uh, back T steps or sits his ass down, your receiver better sink his butt. Okay, because if your receiver's still running at that guy, when he's put his feet in the ground and it's getting downhill, all right, he's going to run by you every time. So we really work hard on reading the defensive back and, and not being in a hurry to get there. Right? The less time you have to hold that block, the better. All right? We want to get there as late as possible. Okay? We want to get our hands on him. And then once our hands on is, is on him, then it's all on a running back or the receiver. You know, that guy's got to make a miss. All right? Once your hands are on the defensive back in the stock block, that defensive back is going to go to the ball. As soon as he goes to the ball, you accelerate him in that direction, but take him where he wants to go, but take him five yards further, and that running back has to adjust off of that. But we miss our stock blocks when our, when our receivers are still running and, they're, and that defensive back is coming downhill at us. Okay? We need to be breaking down, okay, oozing to that block, all right, settled in a hitting position when the defensive back is attacked. Got it. Okay. See how we... What do you do if they go seven in the box and man up in the press perimeter? Are you going to just throw the Daytona play after play? Uh, we're going to throw Daytona. We're going to throw F. Shaq. We're going to throw Chevron. Mercedes is a great play. We don't have it in yet at Ramapo, but, uh, but that's a great man beater. Um, if they can play seven in the box and cover every one of your receivers, you lose. <laughs> they're better, you know, if they're better than every one of your receivers and, uh, you know, and they can play seven in the box to stop your run game, you lose. You know, we, we, we want to, as coaches, have an answer for that every single week. We better, that's my greatest fear, okay, is, you know, somebody's going to come up and, and they're going to have a D-back that's better than each one of my receivers and play seven in the box every play. Well, you know, that, that's, that's where we're going to struggle. So we spend an awful lot of time being able to execute against cover zero. Our, you know, our cover zero plan, our, our Chevron, our Exxons are very difficult to defend, our f Shack, our 99s, our Daytonas, you know, we spend a lot of time making sure we can execute against cover zero um, because if they are going to play that, you know, you've got to make them pay. And uh, fortunately, we haven't seen those teams yet. But, but if we do, we are ready. Good. Hey, that's excellent. How about we transition to Patrick and let him just go through his um, – he's, he's a coach of a team that in high school that, you know, they actually get to do spring football. And, and there are certain states in the south that allow for spring football for high school teams. And I just, you know, he's um, did very well in his first year, and he's he's doing a couple of different things that are helping him play faster in the spring. And so I thought if we could just have Patrick share a couple of those, that would be hey, worthwhile. Hey Nate, hey, Nate, Nate. Yeah. Yeah. Can I just interject one thing before Patrick gets on? Yes, please. Because I think that, I think that's a very valid question because I get it all the time, and. Uh, you know, I never – to me, it's like a guy who used to be a defensive coach always asks that question, right? Well, hey, screw you. I'm going to put seven in the box and play man-to-man. -man. That's how I'm going to – well, that's their answer. To, that's every defensive coach's answer to everything, right? I don't <laughs> care if you're if you're an I team. Well, I'm going to put nine in the box and play man-to-man -man on the two outside receivers. So it, it really doesn't matter what offense you're running. That's what they all say. And I, what I have found and what Drew says is, is right – but when I, I don't see a lot of it. When I see teams that want to play me a lot of man-to-man -man coverage, I right away I want to get into a lot of blue and green, tear fast, dual F quick, trio F quick. I really start thinking in my motions because they have, you know, all of a sudden you're in green and you're sending tear motion. Well, who's got them? The backside wheel, are they going to bump backers? And all it takes is once or twice to die out leverage that guy that's got a man and I flip the ball out there on the Comet, and we're running two guys off, your Will Backer is chasing my back down the sideline. So I think that's one of the reasons we don't see it a lot, because you have to match my, my speed in the backfield with linebackers on all that, all that quick at-the-snap motion that we do. So that's just my two cents on it. Man, man that is really good too, Coach. 
I feel like Nate. I feel like you're Bob Barker tonight or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, going, yeah, that's really good. Behind door number two. <laughs> I don't know who. I don't know who came up with this. I don't know who came up with this offense, but we got a lot of guys doing it really good. What's up, guys? All right. I'm gonna keep quiet. I'm keep quiet now. I'm gonna keep quiet now. Hey, no. What's happening? Hey, is that is that Bobby? That's yeah. Bobby. I see. You, I see a week. Uh, about, see about eight days, huh? I'm bringing our boyfriend with us. Nate. The Nate is coming. The, Nate. The stalker. Yeah, yeah, the stalker. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Nate, I got our room. <laughs> That's just awesome. Yeah, you guys are scary. All right, good. We've, we're testing out this roundtable discussion format, so we've got to make sure it goes well tonight or we're never doing it again. All right. Well, then hurry up and put Patrick on, will you? All right, all Patrick, right. all you. Hey, can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Yes, sir. All right, good. Yeah, I've been getting a lot of questions about our communication and how we're playing fast and a lot of questions about quarterback thought processes. Uh, so, you know, what I'm about to show you, we did a little bit of it last year with one-word formations, with motions built in, and one-word plays off pitcher boards. And our quarterback, um, I'll talk a little bit about our quarterback thought processes. We're combining actually three-pronged attacks with pops on one side and keys on another. Um, and I don't think we'll be able to get to it tonight, but I had a lot of guys on the forum ask me about our jet sweep. Uh, so that probably will be a talk for another night. But just real quick, I want to show you a sample of what I'm doing uh, with our formations. You know, last year, like I said, we dabbled in this, but over since the end of the season to now, and our spring starts next Thursday, I've converted the entire offense over into this format. So it just I think it's going to save us about seven seconds for how we was calling it last year. So I've broken series down. Uh, for, so our first example, we have an A, B, C, D series. All right. So if you look on the screen, that right there, a wing formation with twins to the field, all right, that would our guys, they would see it's our A formation. All right. If you look at our B formation, it's the exact same formation except we've added motion to the boundary, all right, or to create a two by two. So what it's going to do for us, just like we did in two back with commenting to the to the boundary to the one receiver side, we're doing the exact same thing just from a wing position. So if you look at our comet formation, our C formation against the exact same formation, just with motion built in, forming a swing motion. Last for the series is our dash. All right, and it's just our wing motioning over and creating another wing. All right, so next, we got a JM series. It's just our empty series. All right, so J for our guys, it stands for jazz. All right, so it's trips filled with wing. And if you look, our move formation is the exact same set, except our wing is now motioning to the boundary again. All right, so it's still forcing linebackers to adjust your emotions just in different ways with the exact same look. And these guys have to adjust depending on what formation you call in seconds. All right, same, same concept of what we already do from two back or any of our other formations. Just these are samples of some things I'm doing just to go faster. That's all this is about. All right, next, our pitcher boards, okay? Last year I'd have like one board, all right, and we would have you know, the plays on the left side were runs or passes to the left. Plays on the right side were runs and passes to the right. All right. But what we've done now is taken, again, the entire offense, and we can call anything off a pitcher. All right. So thought process for my guys, they're seeing one word for formation, one word for play, and then we're off. All right. So you can see we have a couple different styles of these pitcher boards and four quadrants we're using. Coach, can you just talk about like one of the pictures and how you're tying, how you're putting it together with what your your formations? Yeah, sure. So for us, if you look at this play, top left, uh, that'd be for us shark left. All right. So like the bottom left, that would be for us uh, Superman. It's just lock. That's all it is. 
and then top right, lucky. All right, that's just four verts for, for us. All right, and that really for me, uh, the quarterback style process on these pass plays are consistent. Uh, the pass plays really don't matter as much about direction as the run plays do. Um, and for us, we have a number sequence. We have one, two, three, four on our board, and our guys know which number is what quadrant. So we know they know that's how they know which picture to look at. If that makes any sense. Yep. Okay. All right, last in the series of getting this communication from the sideline to the field is our quarterback. You know, what we're trying to do is just about, I'd say, 98% of our plays, I want a three-prong attack. So I want at any point when the defense presents, uh, it can be a different role, a different look. If I have a play, obviously, you know, we did this a ton last year. We gash them for at least four or five yards, you know, I want to get a replay. But... If, the, if they're a good defense or if they've been ha if they've ta been taught very good rules to be able to adjust on the fly, which I know a lot of no-huddle defenses are going to now, then I want these answers built in just like we always have. But, you know, what I've had in the past, I've had a lot of two-prong approaches, but not so much three-prong. So that that's just a little bit different thought process for my quarterbacks. So what I'm telling these guys, because I have two rookies at quarterbacks, so I need a way – to transfer this in their minds very, very quickly, okay? So our key screens are pre-snap for these guys, our pops are post-snap, all right? So the quarterback stall process every time is he's thinking key, pre, he's thinking pop, post. So I can attach a pop to either side or I can attach a key screen either side and he, just, he can cancel these thought processes out in his head one by one very quickly with just counting, all right? So our, our thought process for him next would be to get this to get this signaled, but you want him to get very, very quick, quick at it. So when we signal something in this, this time, instead of saying X slant uh, key two or X slant Y seam, we're just going with uh, slant, and then we might say key two. All right, so what that would mean is he would look left, and he would signal slant, then he would look right, and he would signal key two. All right, if we wanted to go, say, a dummy signal to the left and comment to the right, he would signal dummy, then comment to the right. And that's just a thought process for these receivers, too. I mean, they, they know what to expect from this quarterback. They know to, what signal to look for every time, and it, it just stays consistent. So... You know, Coach Mazzoni did a great job last, I think it was last week, on Giants. And we, and I can you know, draw it up if I need to. I had formations right here. But with the three-prong attack I'm speaking of is an example of having a key, key screen to one side, a pop to the boundary, and then there's still the ability to run the ball. So, yeah, you want to draw one of them? Yeah, sure. Say we have the F here. Oh, that's, see, my, my letters are slightly different just because my guys already learned these letters by formations. <laughs> so if we run a shark or giants this way, and we had either key two here, slant here. All right, so quarterback's thought process real quick. He's thinking pre-snap, he, if he has numbers, that's where he's going, all right? If he sees any kind of rotation by safety, or if he does not have numbers pre-snap, then he's looking post-snap here. All right, so at any point, the ball could go here, here, or here. Make sense? Absolutely. Okay. And that's why we love this offense. Absolutely. So that uh, that's just some things I'm testing out, and so far, so good. Just just sheer speed and I know you. I, I lose a little bit of variability with some of my formations, but 
deploy fast with what with what I want to do and snap. I want to snap the ball in thir in a minimum of 13 seconds from when the last play ends until the next play snapped. So to be able to relay everything we do in that short amount of time, that's what that's why I'm testing this out. So. Well, like I said, in last year it went well for us on the on the minimum amount of plays we did do. So I'm I'm hoping the result of doing an entire game like this uh, will be very beneficial. And you said you'd film a little bit of spring with that with those young quarterbacks for us. Yeah, I will. I'm gonna you know we'll we'll film uh, all of our Skelly and all of our team, and I can also film you know, some whole practices for us and show you some of our drills and stuff when we get done with it. So, you know, we're dealing with two rookies, a ninth grader and a um, 11th grader that never played quarterback before. So <laughs> should be interesting. So if these guys can do it, I'm pretty sure you can get anyone to do it that, that has a little bit of athletic ability. So. Good. Thanks, Coach. Hey, um, Doug, can you check questions for uh, Coach Browning? Yeah, so going backwards, they said, do you time your plays in practice? If so, what do you average from end of a play to start of the next? If we're going like I want to, we can get about three plays a minute off. So on, a, on average, um, in a five-minute time span, we should be able to get about 15 plays. So I'll script everything from the start of practice to the end. And you know, if, you're, if, you're, if you're able to play guys one way, uh, one thing I would suggest is, you know, don't, don't – I, I would personally – I think it's a lot more effective to have downtime and, and, and interval spurts, meaning you might have a, a couple periods that are really high up tempo, and then you might go to individual for a little bit, or you might go to some group individual, or however you want to do that. So for us, for instance, uh, we're playing a ton of guys just one way in the spring to get our defense a ton of work. So I'm dealing with like some eighth graders and some really young skill guys over there on, on, on the offense. So we're going to have 15 minutes for team, all right? And then we're going to go and have two, we call it indie correction periods, all right? And that's going to be where you can either go as a team of offense and do corrections or you can go to your individual group. Then we're going to have another 15-minute team period that we repeat the exact same plays pretty much. So that allows you, because it's, it's really tough for linemen, especially if you don't have a lot of them, to go that kind of speed for longer than that. I mean, 15 minutes is a lot. I mean, I, we get, you know, with our speed, you know, we're getting off so many plays that, you know, for me, I think 10 minutes, honestly, is plenty. <laughs> but, you know, defense needs work too. So that's, that's where we kind of, you know, framed ourselves in that 15-minute time frame, if that makes sense. All right. Let me see here. I think that was the – those were the two main – well, we did – somebody did ask if you would just explain more time on the cards. I thought you did a good job, but if you could go back over for them, how, the, how you're expecting kids to read those cards. Yeah, sure. No problem. So for us, uh, we actually – I didn't include this. We have a number board. Right, right beside this, you can have a guy signal it. I mean, it really doesn't matter. It's just letting the kids know what quadrant to look at. So for us, you can and you can number this however you want to, but if you number this one, it's quadrant two, it's quadrant three, and it's quadrant four. And these are plays to the left, and these are plays to the right. So however you want to get this information to your kids again, whether it's a signal or a board, it really doesn't matter. They just get they have to know, okay, these plays one and three are to the left, two and four are to the right. I hope that makes sense. And you're trying to put the whole offense on how many boards? Two? Uh, we have I think three, four right now. Yeah, front and back, but a lot of them are a lot of repetitive stuff because you know, we might have Zara, Zara to the right and left, you know, Shark to the right and left, uh, stuff like that. So you're not dealing with a lot of plays. You know, I did a play count minus uh, formations, and or honestly, only around 10 to 12 plays total minus 
our tags and stuff. Um, obviously, when you had a formation, you had a play. But as far as our learning goes for our kids, it's not it's not a lot. Not in spring anyway, because we're keeping it really simple. But we still have the majority of the offense in. Excellent. Doug, any more questions? That's the questions we have for Patrick right now. Good. And well, what, what are some? There we go. I, I'm sorry. Yeah, that, this is a different one here about key screen. Okay. Different. That's different. So that, that's what we had there. You want to jump back into some other ones? Yeah. Yeah, because we got Bobby on, we got Drew on, we got Patrick, and we got Coach Noel Mazzoni. So, yeah, why don't we throw some of those out and go for about 15 more minutes on the roundtable part of it. Okay, so here, here's one of the first questions we had in tonight. It's a, coach, a newer coach in the system. He says, how would you change your thinking when you have ran power eye and veer with almost no passing involved? So here we'll jump into that. Throw it out there. Bobby? Who wants to take it? Bobby, you want to Perfect. answer that? He needed, he, he take on that. There Nate, we go. As a, as a high school Nate, coach, Nate. Question. Yeah, go ahead, Drew. I, as a high school coach, I, I think you really, that's where you have to start then because the run game is somewhat simple. I, I would think, you know, June and July, you need to devote those two months almost exclusively to the passing game. Um, you know, so that your program catches up, so that your kids catch up in those basic skills. You know, two, maybe three days a week of practices that are, you know, almost solely focused on the passing game to allow your, your kids and your program to, to, to catch up in, the, in that area. I mean, I think everyone's going to say, and, you know, Drew, you, tr you changed your offense from a totally different, um, you know, program. So, I mean... We see it all the time, you know, the guys who go all in seem to like, you know, do do very well with it. And the guys that, you know, if they want to just take parts of it, that's fine. But then it becomes, it, it's really hard because you guys that have been in it now for a couple of years, you know, it's like all the parts work together for one purpose. And it's hard to just take certain pieces of the puzzle and then think like it's going to, you're going to be successful with it. Nate, are yeah. you there? Sure yeah, you just got to. You got to follow the plan. You know, you can't have too much. You can't have too many different schemes. We just we just installed this offense at a brand new college. Uh, we're on practice 14, and uh, it's like we're running it for two years already. So we kept it simple. Uh, we kept the inside zone. We ran Shark. Uh, we kept our keys, Chevron, Exxon, and the kids perfected. Um, I actually had a coach defense today because my defensive coordinator is out a couple of days. And our philosophy right now is that we're going to play fast defensively. Uh, we actually implemented a one-word concept on the defense. So we'll call out a one-word concept. that will tell us our front. it will tell us our stunt, our blitz, and our coverage. And we're also playing fast in special teams. So we're using yeah. the whole end zone approach yeah. on our entire team. Yeah. The uh – the 4-3 defense and the 3-3 defense guys do the same thing. They use one- and two-word um, um, calls for their fronts, their coverages, and their blitzes. And they say that's the way we're going because we've got to play fast against all these fast spread teams. Yep, yep. And um, the clinic I did for you guys, what, two weeks ago? I had about 150 coaches there. And the main thing is just complement your plays. Find a way to run inside zone. If inside zone is not there, something else will be there. If your keys are there, throw your keys. The first time you see that free safety flying downfield, throw your locks. Then yep. throw your Rose and Lindas, your rocket lasers, and you actually set yourself up for the day. Yep. Good. Doug? All right. When do you want to run the key to the play side? Do you have to add a signal to indicate key is play side, or how do you communicate that to the players? I actually had to uh, call it something different because our kids were getting confused this year. Um, I actually called it Smoke 1, Smoke 2, Smoke 3, and our kids had a better, uh, uh, they, could they could comprehend that a little better. But, um, you know, last year I used Key 1, Play Side, Key 2, and they understood it. But this year we had to call it something different. Drew, what about you guys? I, I like Bobby's idea because, again, it, it it was a game plan thing, and it could get a little confusing for kids. So 
Um, we're probably going to change it to smoke one, smoke two, smoke three as well. Okay. Yeah. And you're just no. making that call? Okay. And you're no, just making what do you do, no? Well, I, I don't know. My kids never hear key or smoke. That's just a hand signal. Yeah. Yeah. So you look in, I, that, um, my quarterbacks would never say those words at a game. They would just look no. out whatever the hand signal is. Yeah. Is that what you guys are talking about, uh, attaching the, the, the screens to the runs? Yeah. yeah. The front Does the quarterback know whether to put it front side or back side and all that? Backside. When you want to throw that key to the front side, that's the issue. Oh, that part would be good. You're talking about the communication from your signaler to your quarterback. So that way yes. you can control it. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I think Taylor does the same thing. I think I think he goes if it's if if it's like dual right, all right. Which we changed our deal. We we got rid of the odd and evens and all that stuff. So we're either numbers or we're like L.A. Lakers. Oh right? man. <laughs> yeah. L.A. L L.A. Lakers. So L.A. is is zone odd, Zorro odd, Lakers is Zorro even. Because we're going to a lot of just. Uh, I'm trying to just like Patrick was talking. Um, we're kind of in the same same thing, three prong, and just words instead of letters. I we're, we're using words like like fuzz. He says if he says fuzz, that's the flank look that he was talking about with the motion built in. If he says flank, there's no motion, so we're like that same thing. But um, yeah, I think he goes one hand. One hand is play one like. You could smoke would be great. I mean, I think he goes one hand is play is is backside, two hands to the head is play side, whatever. So yeah, I'm I'm right with what you guys are saying. Okay, so we had like 50 guys like angrily email me and call me about changing shark to giants last week. So we are not changing Zorro Odd and Zorro even to L A and Lakers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, wait for 2014 it, it, on that. It, it, because it's spring ball. I know. So the defense is sitting there listening to those words, you know, after about the fourth practice. <laughs> so, you know, my guys, they want to call something different every week. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I got you. That's good. That's great. Doug, what's the next one? So uh, back to yours, uh, Coach Gibbs, is do you put wide receivers into the swing drill to run snag on that uh, drill? No, we, we drill that separately. Um, that swing drill for us is just a chance to get the – the running backs catching the ball and the quarterbacks throwing exclusively to running backs. The swing is a great pass, but you really have to put time in it in, in practice. And uh, when, when all of a sudden the season comes, uh, we didn't have a lot of time to throw it in the season. And I think one of the best things is we, we did was we spent a ton of time on it in the off season, so that it, it kind of became automatic for our kids. So um, I don't think it's as easy as you know we as coaches make it seem, so the kids need to get those reps. Oh, uh, so Drew, let me ask you this. So, do you do pat and go? Um, no, we we don't. Um, and it's a strictly a matter of what can you do in fifty-five minutes of pra offensive practice. Okay, all right. Because okay, we because I think I agree with you. You have to throw the swings to your backs every day, every day. And so it's it's one of the the unsung heroes of the offense that can't be yep. overlooked. Because that's what makes the offense run. Your ability to get the ball and a backhand quickly on the edge, you know. So instead of toss sweep, we're throwing the swing. So we, we're like the same way. Our pat and go, our backs are at the pat and go every day, and we throw pat and go or hitch down the field, and the backs are there, and, and we're going to throw the swing, a hot swing, the check swing. We're going to throw the swings back and forth, but just like we do with the receivers and pat and go. Because he, he is right. It's, a, it's such a weapon. It's not one of those things you can not practice it or throw it a couple times a day and think that your quarterback and back is going to be good at it. All summer and, and during preseason camp, we would do it 10 minutes of practice. So during the summer, we practice twice a week. It's 10 minutes of swing drill on month, on uh, Tuesday, 10 minutes of swing drill on Thursday. Preseason camp when we were doubles and we have extended practice time, there's always a 10-minute swing drill. Unfortunately, when – if, you're, if your kids are playing both ways, when we get to the season, we've only got 55 minutes. It's one of the things that, that went. Uh, but I think the fact that we did so much of it in the off offseason, uh, we were pretty good at it still. Hmm. That's pretty great. Doug, what's the next one? Yep. And 
Coach Gibbs, we were going to give you the screen back too if we come back on to something for you there. So the um, so will you ever flip flop key screen and pop in terms of what you read pre and post snap? Um, that's a new concept for us. Noel's doing that a lot right now. Um, the way I see it is you, you're always key first and, and pop post snap. Noel, how about you guys? Yeah, what Patrick says is exactly right. So we're trying to control the edge, the conflict backer to the run side, all right, with a key. So there's your smoke, right, Bobby? Yeah. So you know, so so yep. you would smoke. You would always you'd always smoke to the run side to control that perimeter guy, and mm -hmm. then our then the, then our our key guy, the guy we're keying for the run, the sixth defender that can get in the box or chase chase the shark. All right, that's that's post snap. So now the quarterbacks decide, okay, I'm not throwing the key. Now at the snap of the ball, his eyes go to the key, the the key backer to the backside, where whether he's going to throw the pop or the, um, you know, whatever you got tagged on the backside, some sort of usually some sort of quick game or or vertical seam deal. Okay. So uh, let's see here, diving slides. So why don't you run keys to both sides? You can, mm -hmm. but I want to. I want to. I want to hit the ball going down the field. I mean, there's nothing wrong with tagging a key to both sides. If that's what you want to do. But now you're telling the quarterback. So which side is his pre-snap key look? So now you got him looking. You know, you got to kind of water it down a little bit for your quarterback, so he can pre-snap look both sides to throw the key, but then at the snap of the ball, all right, where you, now you're just, you're reading the play side. So to me, you're, you know, you, like, as Patrick said, I, I agree with him 100%. You, you become a three-prong. You become triple option offense. Yeah. It's a thought process. You know, you want your guys to be trained to uh, just react. Uh, when you have too much on the field in front of them, uh, they're going to get confused, and they're going to start thinking. You want you guys just to play, play fast. All right, on Zorro, how do you handle a two-tech on the back side? We, we would underblock that, double him with the tackle and guard um, if he's a two-tech. I think that's about all the questions. Okay. Hey, um, Bobby, you want to give an update on, on spring ball for you guys? Uh, spring football. Uh, guys, if you want to be a head coach, take your time. <laughs> uh, I actually had to coach a defense the last three days um, because my uh, defensive coordinator has a situation at home. And, um, you know, you definitely uh, you get a, a feeling of being a head coach. And uh, But offensively, we put the offense in. Um, the offensive coordinator, he's running with it right now. Um, it's we're far, firing on, on all cylinders right now, so the guys look are good. You, yep. Um, are you using Are you using install one, two, and three? Yeah, yeah. We've been through it already four times, and okay. um, you know we have one more practice, and um, our guys they know the signals, they know the plays, uh, the quarterback understands their reads, and we keep it very simple. And now defensively, we're converting to the one word concept on uh, special good. teams. On punt team, we actually run the punt team from the sidelines to the field as fast as possible, get them set up. So we're playing fast all over the place. That's and great. We're having a lot of fun. That's great. Hey, Coach Mazzoni, update on UCLA spring ball, and I know you guys got the game coming up next weekend. Um, no, it's been fun. Um, you know, we're kind of messing around with little stuff. Our, we got our, our defense has got no chance of stopping us <laughs> right now. You know, um, so our main concern, to be honest with you, is that I've I've been really even even simpler this spring because um, we're working hard on the tempo of the game and trying to play, trying to take it to a different level as far as speed and trying to. You know, and I think Drew kind of found this out. Right is. You know the, the the shark play or whatever you're gonna, whatever we're calling it now out of trio where you got a key to the play side you got the pop or the slant or whatever to the back side I'm doing a lot more just 
of just in a six play series getting up and letting the quarter and just letting him replay it or NASCAR it uh, three or four times. Just getting trio and run giants, get trio and run giants, get trio and run giants, get trio and just just let him go. You know, and yeah. the kids get in, man, they catch a rhythm of it. And the quarterback now, so you see four different looks. He's getting to work against all four different looks, and he's finding all the answers to it. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's, I don't even know how many more plays I need. And that, yeah. so I'm, I'm kind of getting, I'm kind of getting into where uh, I'm getting a two or three play, um, a kind of a two or three play package. Because now that you're three pronged, and I'm also getting to throw the ball, you know, Giants in the backside. They they they, they push to the key, all right, and they start to they roll the coverage to cover three, and the Will Backer runs with the Giants, and he's pulling the ball and throwing backside slants for 30, 40 yard gains. Okay, so why the hell do I need to go call Daytona? Right, call it again. Right. So so uh, and so I've, I've kind of watered it down a little bit out of my blue and green and, and 10 personnel stuff so the kids could, they, they really are starting to understand it. I'm getting Chevron a lot out of dual, all right, and I'm playing the back, I'm starting to play a lot more backside games, all right, with my two receiver side. So getting in dual, and I'm using more travel out of dual. So I'm getting in the dual look and either tear or travel in the back strong and throwing quick game, throwing rocket screen, throwing things like that out there, and then when that Mike Backer starts pushing to it, all right, I got what I want on the back side. So I'm starting, I'm using more tags on the back side. Yeah. So it's been fun. Cool. Hey, this has been a great night. I really I really enjoyed it. I hope, I hope most of us, I hope most of the guys on tonight did too.